Good morning, everybody. Today, I am playing round four of the European Team Chess Championship, and Sweden, the country that I'm representing, is facing Turkey. So this is gonna be a tough match. I'm facing a 2100 today, so she's slightly higher rated than me. So that means that I'm gonna need a lot of prep because I'm playing with the black pieces too. This is my first game with the black pieces. But this is a beautiful day in Montenegro. Look at the, look at the beautiful mountains. They're so pretty. <laughs> I haven't really been outside that much because I'm playing chess here, but I think I kind of want to go on a walk before I start prepping. So let's go on a walk. I've finished prep. I think that I'm ready. I'm a little bit nervous to be honest because um, I think today a win for Sweden would be absolutely amazing. So I'm playing with the black pieces. I'm just hoping that I don't lose. I wanna either draw or win today. So let's go to the game. This game was an absolute roller coaster. I can't remember the last time I played such a tactical game that required so much thinking and brain power. Like right after the game, I was completely fried in my brain. Um, but I'm very excited to show it to you. So I was facing a woman international master from Turkey and she was rated uh, pretty much exactly like my rating, um, a little bit tiny below 2100. And uh, she's been higher rated in the past, uh, hence her title, but now she's dropped a little bit in rating. But still, I mean, she was obviously a strong player, so I knew that I had to play like really well to score against her, and also she, um, she was playing with the white pieces. Her name was Hayale Isgenderova from Turkey. I am pronouncing this so wrong, I am so sorry. Um, but she wins e4, and I play the Sicilian, which is what I typically play against e4. And then here, after e6, I wasn't expecting her to do this move, but she went d3. She only pushed her pawn one step. And I really was not expecting her to do this, and this is something that I've realized, that most people in this tournament are not playing what they typically play against me. And I don't know if it is because they think that I'm very prepared, if it is because they know that my parents are grandmasters and they're scared that I have some, some crazy GM preparation, but everybody is, is switching what they typically do to something else. So yeah, so she went D3 and here I thought D5 has to be good. I'm just getting you know a lot of space in the center. So I'm getting a very active position early on with black. She went Knight D2, I developed, she went G3, I developed, Bishop G2 and here, here, um, I was gonna go bishop e7. I was just gonna move up my bishop one step, castle, and just play a normal game. But I had a, um, what's the word? A ray of creativity. <laughs> Inspiration. I felt inspired. Um, and I did a move that is objectively bad, but I know that this is a typical plan in, this, in the Sicilian, and I thought that in this position, it's a plan too. Now here's the thing, I haven't played this position a lot of times before. So I, I haven't faced d3 uh, in the Sicilian that many times before because it's not like the scariest thing white can do. So here I should just have developed bishop e7, I should have castled, and just played a normal solid game and see what happens. But I decided to do something very different. I went for the move h5. And this is, not a, uh, this is not a terrible move, I wouldn't call it a terrible move, but it's definitely a very risky move because forever my pawn is gonna be on this very weak square, h5, and this is a bad square because it's not protected by any pawn. And also whenever I castle, uh, my king is gonna be weaker than if the pawn was here. So this is a big uh, move. And what is the idea of this? Well, the idea is that I want to maybe uh, push h4. I want to maybe sacrifice this pawn to open up the rook file whenever the king castles. 
I really want her to go h4. This would be a mistake by her, um, as it would leave me this square for my knight forever, <coughs> which would be really good. Um, so I really wanted her to go h4, and in fact, she was holding her hand over the pawn, and I kept screaming in my head, please go h4, because I knew it was a positional mistake, but she didn't do it, and she castled instead. And here I developed my bishop, um, she went rookie one, I went queen c7, uh, simply because I wanted to kind of prevent her from pushing this pawn. If she would ever go here, then I just simply go knight g4, and this pawn is going to be very weak. So instead she captured... I captured back, and she went knight b6, uh, sorry, knight b3, and now she's threatening to take this pawn immediately. I mean, my bishop is pinned, so she's threatening right now to take the pawn. So I thought that the only viable option that I had was to castle and get my king to safety to defend my pawn. But now she started being very tricky. She went bishop g5. What is the idea? Well, the idea is that she wants to capture my knight, and I don't want to capture back with the pawn because then uh, my pawns are going to be doubled. So I want to capture it back with my bishop, but then my bishop is not defending this pawn anymore, anymore. So she's trying to weaken my pawns, and my pawns are weak right now. Because they don't have any pawns defending them. They're kind of, you know, out, out, out in the air by themselves. They're, they're really not protected. It's like a battlefield where, where, you know, people are just going off roaming on their own instead of being all in a group, you know? So... Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I wasn't too happy here. I realized that probably something has gone wrong. It would be much better if my pawn was here and I could go something like h6. Um, but so I thought here for a while and I was thinking about what to do and probably what I should have done is something like queen over here to defend the pawn or maybe even a5 to try to push back this knight. But I went for this move knight g4. And the reason I did it was because I thought that if I trade my bishop with hers, I'm going to have a very good position. I thought that this would be totally fine. I would be defending. I'd be getting my knight maybe too at some point g6. And then I'd push my pawn. I really want to push this h4 pawn. Um, so this is my idea. But she did a move that I was not expecting at all. She went h3, which is maybe a move that I should have expected, but I wasn't expecting her to do this. I was expecting her to deal with my uh, trade offer. So here I was thinking for a while, what do I do? And so maybe the most logical thing here, I thought here for a long time, I was thinking about all kinds of different lines. I was considering uh, taking, I was considering pushing this pawn one step. I was considering uh, going back with the knight. I was even considering, I mean, what happens if I take here and then push? I was thinking about a lot of different things. I was thinking about knight here. I was thinking about a lot of different options. And always, whenever you've done a move, the option of just simply going back and admitting that the move you did was a mistake is something that really hurts your ego. <laughs> so here, objectively, the best move is for me to go knight f6 and just simply go back. And I realized this during the game. I was like, this is probably the best move. But it hurts your ego because you admit that this move was a mistake. You admit that your opponent saw a move that you didn't see. And you admit that things didn't go according to plan. And so that's, that's not something you want to admit. Um, it, it's crazy. It's so stupid because you should always be doing the objectively best move. But yeah, it's hard. Um, so I, I should just have gone knight f6 and I kept on thinking about it for a while. Just going back, developing and just playing a game because I'm not sacrificing a pawn. But then I saw this really beautiful idea of sacrificing this pawn in a, in a line where I would get a lot of activity. So here I thought like, six, seven moves in advance, I was calculating for a long time, and I found this idea of capturing her bishop. I thought here for 25 minutes. I saw this idea of capturing her bishop, and after she captures back, my plan was to retreat, sacrificing my c5 pawn, but the idea being that the knight is in the same file as the queen, so I thought that I'd be able to have some, some discovery knight move, and so and like I said, this is what I had calculated, you know, when, when we, before we traded bishops. So when knight before, I'm threatening this knight. If the knight would move anywhere, um, I would just simply capture this pawn with my queen. So she has to go d4 to defend the knight. And now the move that was the key in this whole idea, bishop f5. Now why is this the key of the whole idea? The, I, the reason for it is now I'm threatening the c to pawn, I'm threatening this fork. And if she would go knight d3, 
This would just simply lose due to knight takes c2. Rook c1, she's pinning my knight, I cannot take the other rook, but I capture this knight and after queen takes, I capture her rook threatening the queen. And when I had calculated all of this, you know, six moves ago, in this position, when I saw that in this position, I felt like a genius. <laughs> I felt literally like a genius. So I went bishop f5, and she was thinking here for a while. I, th I, I thought here that I was winning. I couldn't see what she could do. Because if she went rook c1, I would take this pawn. If she, if she couldn't defend this, I just didn't see what she could do. So in this position, I thought I was winning. I was so sure that I was winning here. And I was smiling and I was feeling great. All my pieces were so active, my knight, my bishop, everything was so active. And I just thought, wow, this has been a beautiful game. But then she did a move that I did not see at all. And I don't think she saw it earlier either, but I think she saw it in this position. And this was a beautiful move. That was the best move by the engine. And this was a beautiful move. She went c3. Just straight up giving me the fork. And I looked at her and I was like, what? <laughs> You're just giving me a rook? And then immediately, you know, when a strong player does something like this, there's always an idea behind it. So I looked at her and I was like, okay, so why am I not winning on the spot? And when I started thinking in that path, I saw her best defense. And so I realized that after I go knight c2 and I fork, she has rook e5. And so here I was thinking for a long time, um, and I don't know if I should go knight c2 maybe in this position once again, I should admit my mistake and just retreat. But you know, it's hard when you've started committing to something to, to stop committing to that plan, right? So, so I went for it, uh, even if I saw that she had this different idea. So she went rook e5, and now the idea is that she's threatening my bishop. Um, if I take her rook, she's gonna take my bishop and my knight is going to be trapped. Uh, so she's going to get two pieces for the rook. So she's going to capture two minor pieces. I will get a rook. But two minor pieces is preferable to a rook, especially in a middle game. So um, I was thinking here for a long time. I was once again calculating a lot of things. I was like, should I go back with the bishop? Just let the position be. Should I take the rook and try to hold on to it? Or I was even considering going for this crazy move, rook a e8. The idea being... Um, that if she would now defend the rook, she would now defend the rook, I would take, take, and then I would be able to uh, take here. And then if she goes rook takes bishop, I am able to get her queen. But I would be giving up my rook, my knight, and my bishop for it. So this position I was calculating, and I was like, I'm getting her queen, but I'm giving up so much of my own material. My pieces suck. Um, yeah, I, I didn't like it. So I ended up not going for this, but I did see this idea. So I ended up taking her rook. She took my bishop, and now I went b6, threatening the knight. The idea was that after the knight retreats, I wanted to go queen c4 to be able to threaten her knight so that if she takes my knight, I can take hers. Now you can see that the evil bot right now is saying that this is completely winning for white. But let me tell you, this is not as clear in the game. Um, it's very clear when you look at the eval bar, but this is very complicated in the game because the reason that this is winning for white right now is because of something that happens in 10 moves, pretty much. So it's not like, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a lot more complicated than it seems. But obviously the problem here is that my king is very weak. If my pawn was right now on h7, I'd be fine. But the problem is that my king is so weak. Uh, and that is a, an immense problem that this pawn is over here because she has a lot of different tactics. So she went knight f4, which is the best move. I captured, the idea being that now she cannot take here. Well, well, she can, but if she would uh, do all of this, I would be able to have queen b1 check and take the rook. So I was trying to defend my king through my queen being over here. Uh, she went king h2. And here, I guess, was uh, kind of crucial, but I, I took this pawn. She captured on d5, which was a great move. Um, and Actually, as crazy as it sounds, after I went queen c2, I actually thought that this was relatively fine, which is obviously not. I mean, I am completely lost here. But I kept on calculating, and I was calculating all kinds of things. Um, and I thought, okay, if she takes here, I take back. Um, and now, I mean, the only move that she has that's winning is queen f3. She would trade, obviously, I'm winning because I'm material up. She can't do anything else. 
So she only has queen f3, and this I thought was kind of unclear, but, you know, looking at the engine, it's apparently completely winning for white, but like I said, it wasn't as, as, as clear um, during the game for me, at least. So she went knight e7 check, which was very strong. I went king h8, and now she sacrificed her knight. Knight takes f7. She sacrificed her knight, and after rook takes f7, um, <laughs> she sacrificed her rook. <laughs> Uh, this is the only line that's winning. Um, I cannot take. If I take, it's a mate in 17, apparently. But I cannot take uh, because her queen is going to be coming in and this rook is going to fall and my king is just going to be so weak. So my only move is knight h7. And now the only reason this is winning for white, which I didn't realize when I was calculating all of this before, is that she can trade my queens. And after she goes for this check and takes my rook... Um, it's equal material, pretty much. She, well, she's two pawns up, which I guess isn't so much equal material, but the, the problem here, the, the big problem here is just that my pieces cannot move. My rook is stuck because she has this check, and my knight is stuck because she has this checkmate. So if I right now had my rook somewhere else, and I was able to go knight f6, my rook was anywhere else, let's say my rook was here, and I was able to go knight f6, this may have been a little bit more salvageable. But, I mean, yeah, the, the position here is just, I, I can't make a single move. No move right now is good, literally no move, which is so sad. So I took on f2 in complete desperation, because, well, I mean, if she goes king h1, then I can go knight e3, and then I'm fine, but she goes king g1, and now I don't have time for knight e3, which is a crucial move to stop the bishop from coming up here. So I had to go back, she went bishop d5, and this was completely brutal. Uh, I threatened her, her bishop, you know, hoping for a miracle where she would take my rook, but she went for the best move, which is just to simply go bishop e6, and this is just brutal. I can't move a single piece. I cannot move my rook, I cannot move my knight, I can't move this knight, it doesn't have any good squares. So I, I moved my pawn, which is the only thing I could do. But now I'm losing my rook, and, uh, you know, every piece after too. Uh, completely brutal here. And then in this position, I resigned. Um, and I lost the game, uh, which was obviously very sad. Um, I was feeling very sad right after the game. Um, but this game was just was, was, was just really tactical. And, and like I said, seeing it through, through an engine perspective, it looks a lot simpler than what it felt during the game for both of us. Because there were so many things to think about and so many things to consider and so many lines to calculate. And every line was so important because we can see that the reason she is winning, I mean, the reason she is winning, let me go back. <laughs> In move 18, the reason, I mean, move 16, the reason she can do this move in move six, uh, 16, C3, is literally because 10 moves later, in move 26, she has this. If she cannot do this, uh, trade of queens, it's not winning for her. So I kept on thinking for most part of the game that I was better, that I was doing fine. And that was obviously completely delusional because that wasn't the case. And I think that was the craziest part, that I actually felt for a big chunk of the game that I was better, and I wasn't, because it just doesn't work. The, the, the variation just doesn't work. Um, and that's kind of crazy to think about. If my rook would just have been on any other square and not on a8, like obviously this would have been winning too, it's just that my rook is, is on this square. So I was feeling really sad after the game. I felt like, oh, like I wasn't able to calculate this well enough. Um, and also my team uh, lost and uh, everyone drew apart from me losing. So my loss was like the reason the team lost. I mean, you can't think about it that way because obviously we're a team. So everyone is in this together, but still like everyone else drew and I lost. So it's always a bad feeling when you're the only person that loses in the team. Um, so I was, I was feeling really sad after the game, um, but I'm feeling a little bit better now. And I feel like the next match is what matters and that I just need to come back stronger and I can't doubt myself because of, because of one game. But obviously I'm, I'm very sad that, uh, that I lost. It felt very unnecessary and I think the whole 
things started going wrong when I went h5 on move 6. I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have played so aggressively. I should have played a solid game. So it's going to be my take uh, for the next game. I'm just going to play solid. I'm going to trust myself. I'm going to trust my intuitions. Um, I'm going to trust my calculation because I, I feel like in this game I did see a lot of things. Even if I wasn't able to fully calculate uh, until the very end because it was a very difficult game. But I need to trust myself and I need to just come back stronger the next game. And I need to not doubt myself because of me uh, losing one game. I think that's the most important part. Um, being able to come back after, after you feel like you failed. I feel like that's the most important part. So that's what I'm going to take away from this, as well as, you know, taking away more specific things, such as, you know, what I should have done in the opening and, and calculation things, etc. Dad, my game made us lose the match today. How are you feeling? I feel I'm sorry. very, very sad. First for you, <laughs> for the team and for you. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. For myself also, of course. Yeah, of But course. But tomorrow, another day. I will it be is. optimism positive to win. Yeah, but it was it was a crazy game. You were watching yeah, the game. It was a nice game, yes. So she, she played, played very well. She played very well. Much better than his son game. Yeah, yeah. No, she played sure. very well. Yeah. Um nothing to yeah. do. I still haven't checked with the engine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna check it right now. Um, Only I'm sorry because excited. I think we had today two two one game, we had one point more and then I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But, but it was it was it was very close, but it's sad that we lost the match. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow new day, Dad. Yes.